Welcome to the Laurent Collective Podcast, where we go deeper than just surface talk. Each week, we'll explore everything from family, business, creativity, culture, and faith. To make sure not to miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and hop on to Instagram at Laurent Collective to chat with us about this episode. Today, we're just going to have a little bit of fun today and kind of share about how we build conversation at our dinner table with our kids and with their guests and um, just talking about, yeah, how we make sure that we're uh, allowing people to be seen and heard at our dinner table. So here we go. We want you to be a guest at our dinner table. Yes. And well, maybe one day we will actually record our dinner table conversation. Oh, that would be fun. That, that would, would be fun be, to do. Really cool. um, you've, uh, in a previous podcast, you'll have to go back and listen. We have interviewed our children so you can get to know them, but it would be funny to, if they'd be up for it, we'll have to ask their permission to record our dinner table conversations. But we thought we would just give like a little snippet of some things that we have been super intentional about doing at our table. Yes. Um, when we have a meal, typically our evening meal with our kids, um, to open up the conversation with them, to actually find out how their day was. Have you ever asked your kids? Yeah, exactly. How was your day? And they say, fine. Uh, that happens to us every single day. Yes. Um, and so how we get more out of them than that, um, and, and then how we let them in our lives too. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think half the time they're like, well, that's and, and we always do this with guests. Yes. So yeah. we do something at our dinner table called high, low, high. Yep. Oh, let's back up. So that we do that. So basically, hold on, and then we'll talk about. <laughs> My mind is going too fast right now. Too many cups of tea. Um, that so basically that means we're asking everyone what was the highlight of your day, what was something that was kind of a low, and then mm-hmm. we end on a highlight as well. So we're trying to get yeah. two. What right. were two things that were a really but, good thing about your day, and then what was something yeah. that was a bit of a bummer? And initially, it was only just high what was a high and what was a low for your day. Mm-hmm. And one of our sons was like, well, I can't, I don't want to end on a low. So, yeah, so I want to say another second. high. So that's why it's high, low, high. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So the first thing you may have just noticed, obviously, um, and this is something we find extremely important in our family. Um, mm. And some people find it weird that we do this. So yeah. everyone's especially on a different here. page, especially, especially here. here. There's yeah, some yeah. different things that are the cases here, but we do eat on the majority of evenings, it's not always, on the majority of the evenings, we eat a meal with our kids at the same time with them. Yeah. Um, depending on what we're making, but the majority of the time too, we're trying to get them to eat the same thing that we are eating. Um, and that is the case. Again, like I said, there are, you know, we had a night last week where I gave them pizzas and we left to go meet friends out for, at their house for dinner. Mm-hmm. We have date nights where we make them something simple. And, and then, then we, we eat, later. eat later, but we yeah. do still on some of the, on most of those nights, sit with them. not always, we still try to sit with them. Yeah. Um, it does mean our, and we've had so many conversations about this culturally where everybody's at on this and stuff like, um, you know, or your age and season of life and stuff. The fact that like we eat dinner anywhere from five thirty to six thirty, Some people are like, aren't you starving before you go to bed? And yeah. We're yeah. We just were just talking about that it. the other day. Yeah. Um, and then some people choose to feed their kids, especially here. It's called like tea. And so that would be like a five to five thirty like kids dinner. And mm-hmm. then the adults would have their dinner more at like, eight or nine i could never wait that i mean i have waited that long before to eat dinner and i have to eat something before that time mm. or i'm crashing yeah a lot of our friends are like if i would eat at like five or five thirty i i would probably need to have something substantial at like nine o'clock before yeah bed. exactly so it's just interesting but we're just yeah. again sharing our perspective and yeah. stuff like that so we do eat you know it's usually around six that we eat dinner um, and that kind of thing with our kids. And why we do that is because we are at a stage with our family that our kids are gone all day long. They're not Mm. in the house. I mean, well, (laughs) they were in our house a lot the past year, but typically they are not in our house. And, um, you know, when we have tried and we still try, we try a lot that right after school time period, you know, we even walk home with our kids. So we even have a long time with them, Mm -hmm. 15 minutes or so to question them about their day. 
We usually get nothing. I'm lucky if I get like yeah. what someone did in PE or something like that. Yeah. So you have specific questions. Yeah, like I have specific questions that I ask them, but they're like the simple ones. Like, what did you have for lunch? And, you know, what did you do at break time or recess or whatever you want to call it? So. I think it, I think we have found that that right after school period is not the time where they're ready to describe to you that they had a rough time with a friend during their break. Right. Like they're not there yet. They need to kind of have just a downtime. So we often we give them a snack. We walk home. We just do simple chat um, things that are. not And then we realize once they've had some time at home for an hour or two that they then are like they've had time to rethink about their day. And then they've had time to reflect on some things. And they and they probably yeah. subconsciously know now the high low high is coming. Um, oh, for sure. And so I think not, in some ways our teenagers like, oh, high low high. I know. <laughs> they, all of them are like that some days. Yeah, trust me. sure. Um, or they'll just say like whatever they can possibly say. Or they'll say something from two days ago. And we're like, no, no, no. We're asking about today. We want to know about today. Yeah. Um, so we're with you if you're a parent and you have found that to be the same thing that's really hard to get information out of your kids to find out about their day when they are in school and stuff like that so this is one of the ways that we do that Mm -hmm. um and you know we we've done it several different ways where one kid gets to go first then they pick the next person or we just pick sometimes it's literally caused fights because why wouldn't it Mm -hmm. um that i want to go first he went first yesterday all those kinds of things we work through that but then we have them say they're high and low and they're high. And then what it provides too is we always tell our kids like ask questions then. Like if mm-hmm. someone says, um, you know, my high was that we did this cool thing in science. Well, that's great information, but what did you do in right. science? Like tell us more about that. Or why was it why was it the high? Why like tell us more about like yeah, why, why did was you enjoy that, cool? that or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So. And like for instance, yesterday one of our sons had um he had a sports day and he said, Oh my low was the sports day and we were like, Okay. <laughs> Well, why was it a low? And then we found out, like, when he was running, he fell and he, his knees landed in some thistles and he had he broke out in the hives and his hay fever was really bad. I mean, literally, his poor eyes were swollen this morning. Yeah. His hay fever was really bad. Like, just multiple things made the sports day not so fun for him. Um, but we could have just left it at, okay, sports day wasn't fun, but we yeah. asked follow-up questions. So it's like, ask. Sometimes you don't have to. Sometimes it's like, okay, great. Yeah, it's very, um, it's very obvious. That's, sometimes yeah. they'll say something like, oh, we played a fun game during break. I'm like, oh, who did you play with? And that, mm-hmm. and you get to know then, like, who are the kids that they are playing with mm-hmm. at school? Who are they maybe having trouble with? Are they, mm-hmm. you know, if they didn't have fun when they were learning math today, then... Yeah. One of my know. favorite things is, like, when they come and say, oh, we did this really cool game uh, on break or at recess, like... Uh, and they'll call it something, and I'm like, "What? What are you? What? What game is that? I don't understand." It's more and then the British version, and and then they try to describe it, and then it's like, "Oh, well, that's what we would call that this, or yeah, you know what I mean?" Like and four square versus champ, champ, yeah, and things just like that. Yeah. All these different things that you know they have unique names here for, like you know, games that we would play as a kid. Mm-hmm. That you know they play the same game, but it's just called something different, or there's slightly different rules or something like that. So it's I, for me, I always like hearing that and understanding that from them and things like that so then we can kind of share oh well this was our experience yeah we've done that before and we pat and i share too now sometimes especially if we're going last (laughs) they tend to sidetrack or not listen or like the other night or just leave the table yeah pat was talking about his high low high and zane just got up and left the table and we're like where are you going like we're still talking so but other times they're really engaged with what we're saying and they're Mm -hmm. asking us questions like you know, if Pat says something about something he worked on, they was having really fun, the kids will, you know, really ask questions or I'll say hello and, you know, and they'll really ask questions of why that was a low and that kind of thing. Or sometimes they'll make comments like, I don't ever want to be an adult because they don't want to do the things that we've said were our low or, yeah, that's true. or that kind of thing. Um, and so it, it's cool because they get a little window into, I mean, obviously there are certain things we wouldn't share with them that wouldn't be appropriate to share with them maybe as a low sure. or something. Yeah. Um, but I think then they get a little window into that too. And then it has been huge when we have people over. And sometimes even, sometimes we'll switch it if we're having somebody over for lunch. We'll be like, let's still do the high, low, high because we want a guest to experience that. And sometimes it gets 
people to understand and like know somebody differently. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we'll include guests in that. Um, And our kids, sometimes they, sometimes they don't always do this, but sometimes then they pester the people with questions and we're like, okay, one question at a time. Um, But we've, you know, tried to make them, we always say like tell our kids to like be curious about somebody, ask questions, like Mm -hmm. want to know them kind of thing. Um, And then having a guest in that is really cool because then the kids can see like, just different experiences people have and um, things like that of just including others in it. Um, and if their friends are having dinner with us, if we're having a family dinner, sometimes we'll ask their friends that question and um, hi, low, hi, and, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah, definitely. It's just a different way. I think so many parents struggle with how do I, how do I know about my child's day? Mm-hmm. If you have a teenager too, I mean... Oh, it's so hard right it can now. be really we're, hard we're newbies still i think in yeah some way. so in the we're teenage still years. learning that exactly that, so. but this does i mean some of us are like i don't know i really didn't have any and we're like okay we'll come back to you then because we're even if it's the smallest thing if you can i mean and that was true we still continued this during covid times and when we were mm, all in the same house true. every single day it felt like well why are we sharing this because we've all seen each other's day in many ways in our, each other's space all day exactly yeah. but often somebody would say something that either was really encouraging to someone else like mm-hmm. it was my high today that like veda played with me or something like that and that you know was really encouraging then or like mm-hmm. a low that we didn't realize you know was the case for that person like they, they could have literally just said i'm just really missing my friends right now and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff but even when we were all in the same house all the time we still didn't always have those check-ins always. And so that yeah. was, again, another check-in. And sometimes sometimes then there's a follow-up. Like, um, there's often been conversations that have tailed off then, especially if, like, an individual child has said something. Um, and then we either want to encourage them in that, like, love that you mm-hmm. invited your friends to that thing and, like, keep doing that kind right. of thing. Or if they've had a low, and, like, we'll still talk about it with – the other kids around but sometimes then it's another conversation later yeah, definitely. um to say like hey i know that was your low you want to tell me even more about that now like or let's talk about that mm-hmm. a little bit more and that kind of thing so it opens it up for later conversation too yeah definitely and i think it, again it just it allows us a space to create deeper relationships with our kids right and and it allows them to feel the freedom to ask us questions and yeah to like to, again, like you were saying, like we're, we're really trying to push this be curious thing, you know, to really be asking questions of people and and not to just take the the simple answer um, to really dig deeper, to, to really ask good questions and and to, you know, allow them to understand how, you know, to listen well and to to let somebody know that they're being seen by certain questions that they're asking and things like that. So, um, you know, it might be something very simple that we're doing like these high, low highs, but hopefully it's building habits and things like that, that will take them into as they become adults and things like that, that they'll do with their friends or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. That's the hope. Right. And I, and I think, um, it, it also is, it's just, it's, like you said, it's a way of connecting with the kids. And it's also something that I think often when we talk to other people, sometimes that don't like have dinner with their kids and stuff, they'll say, oh, I don't have time to do that. Because I think there's this weird thing of like, oh, family dinner has to be an hour long. Like, let's be real. <laughs> Our kids generally, especially if they like it, scarf the food down typically. And <laughs> we're like, wait a minute. Did we, we, Pat and I are still not even halfway through our meal and sometimes they'll be done. Um, and so... I want you to know, like, don't have this picturesque, like, yeah, that it's all thing. like, oh, we all sit at the table, and the and candles are lit, yeah, and yeah. and we have this long yeah. conversation for an hour long. I mean, sometimes yes, sometimes. sometimes it, I mean, days. Jude has a thing for lighting candles and making our meal well, be special, true. and he'll put little name yeah. cards out. I mean, there are times that, that happens. So I don't want yeah. to, but say there are other times. That the majority, it is though, pulling, pulling teeth to do any kind of high, low, high, or. Yes to get any conversation out of them. So there are those days for sure. And sometimes it's literally that we've just sat at the table for 20 minutes. That's all like 20 minutes. We've had those things. Sometimes they're super quick. Sometimes there are extra questions and the conversation goes on longer, but I don't want you to have this like (laughs) picture of us 
the Instagram life of yeah. the, and our I dinner table. I think I have posted not. when Jude has done like the candlelit dinners that he likes to do with us and stuff well, like yeah. that. So I am posting that because it is really special when we do those. But our typical nights are not like that, that it's not... No. You know, there's usually somebody complaining about the fact that, like, why is there an onion on my plate or my food's touching <laughs> yeah. or he got, oh, gosh, yeah, we have one child in particular. There's more. There, They have yeah. more of this than I do. Hold the plates next to each other or the glasses next to each other. So, oh. But just the idea, the, but just the idea that we actually sit down with one another and, and look at each other rather than, um, you know, may, maybe sit down and, like, you know, we're all watching a show together or something like that. Like, yes, we, we do that from time to time. But for the majority of the time, we're all sitting at a table. We're looking at each other. We're somewhat trying to chat and create conversation mm-hmm. and, and hear about how each other's doing and things like that. So um, we do our best. And we try. Well, and something, too, I think when I've talked to some friends about this in the past, they've said, well, like, we can't do dinner together. Like, there's sports. Mm somebody's working later those kind of things and like i'd highly recommend trying it over breakfast then like try and have a breakfast then you know our three kids and yes we have one that leaves a little bit earlier than the other two and stuff like that but is there a way then that you can create that at breakfast time where you all commit to being at the breakfast table for 10 minutes again it doesn't take long to do your high low highs the day before or something like that or to be able to have conversation and all there's just something about being around Mm -hmm. a table with one another Um, it doesn't matter what you're eating. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. Like whatever it yeah, might I mean, be, if, whatever if works it's not, best if in it's your a schedule. If it's not a quote unquote dinner, dinner thing or a lunch thing or a meal thing, it's you know, Could can, be a snack can you, you have together? Yeah, can you create a, a another cup of tea time? at night? Yep, exactly. Just some some kind of you know family check in point where you can just just hear how each other is doing. I mean, that that can go such a long way. Like I feel like. Sometimes you kind of, I know for me, I feel like, gosh, I don't know if, like, we know where, you know, this kid is or that kid is or how they're even doing right now. Maybe because we've gone a couple of days where we haven't done the, the high, low, high or the check in at dinner time or, or we have been so busy that it's been really hard to, to, to have a real good sit down meal or whatever. So again, like I was saying, like, we don't want to paint the picture that, we we do this every night and it's like perfect every night and there's you know candles lit every night but you know i think we're we're doing our best um to make this something that is is habit forming that we all sit down at at the table with one another and and we are staring at each other and we are generally wanting to understand how we each other are doing like that's just that goes such a long way for us and for our family and i think in a lot of big ways because we started doing that in the states when we were when we moved here to london that was such a a a time for us to to really connect and help one another in the transition um that i'm so thankful for that i'm so thankful for that time you know as we transitioned to living here um, that we were able to really hear and listen and and to to really be able to understand where we all were in the transition um, and how that looked. So, yeah, I think just, yeah, it just helps in so many different ways. So. Well, and I think, too, some moments that I can, when you're consistent, I think that's what yeah, like Pat's that's saying. We're, we're not perfect in it. There are certainly nights that, that I'm like, oh, we forgot to ask Kylo highs. And when we have guests over, I'm like, oh, we forgot to do that. Or, you know, things just don't work out. That one person, we haven't gotten dinner ready and one person has to go off to some, mm-hmm. you know, to swimming lessons or something like that. And we didn't get to do it. All, all that stuff happens. However, there is something about trying to be as consistent as we possibly can that then it's an and it's a, something the kids know is coming. It's something they they most nights look forward to. <laughs> yeah, most but nights. then there's been some really cool moments where like somebody's had tears over something that has been really hard. Yeah. And the kids have like stopped eating and like hugged each other or there's been moments where like, you know, something really cool has happened for one of mm-hmm. them. Um, as a celebration and a high, like everyone cheers or we'll give them a hug of encouragement, like well done because they know they've been working really hard on that and that kind of thing. And so it's built really cool relationships with them, with one another as well, because they are, I mean, we have 14, 10 and seven. And so like, that's a wide range. Um, But to see then like understand each other's life differences and stages and celebrate or be there for each other in those things. um, 
Yeah, it's been, it's, I, I guess that's probably something we didn't expect out of it. Yeah. We just wanted to make sure we knew how our kids were. Yeah. But what has also come out of it is relationship building between them yeah, as true. well and how they see each yeah. other and understand each other, which is yeah. huge. And the, uh, uh, when I was, as you were talking, I was reminded of, you know, there are some nights where like some of the kids are like, I don't have a high low eye. I just don't or whatever. And like for us, we were always like, okay, so there was nothing that happened today that that you can say was good there's nothing you know and i think we have these unique conversations about that and so i think for us or at least for me it really helps me go and look at my day and go you know if it just felt like a day but there there are good there are good things that happen in the day there are there might have been a struggle in the day but there's always good things that are happening that we need to celebrate and talk about and all that kind of stuff where even if it just felt like a blah day and it was like, oh my gosh, how is it seven o'clock right now? Um, I don't really feel like I accomplished anything or I did anything. But if you really look back into your day, there are so many things that you can be grateful for and thankful for um, and how they went. And I want our kids to realize that. I think, you know, I really want them to, even if they just felt like it was another day at school um, and then they come home, there's something that in the day gave them life and... And, and helping them identify those little, even it's even if it was the smallest thing that, you know, your sister helped you do this with whatever, like that's a really cool thing that happened today. Like that's a, that's a high, you know? Um, so that I, well, I we, and, yeah. and what you're saying is we, we, if they, if they do that kind of stone wall shut down, like I don't have anything today. And sometimes they're in that mood. Get that we yeah. get there too. Yeah, yeah. Um, that we are like, well, let's start from the beginning of the day. Was there anything like, mm-hmm. did you enjoy your breakfast? Did you, you know, do this or whatever it may be to help them think of the. And we need that too because, I mean, mm. as adults, let's be frank, like our days are much more routine than theirs are mm-hmm. and don't have as always exciting bits and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. like, it's sometimes hard to identify, sometimes easier, unfortunately, to identify the low than it is the highs. Yeah, definitely. And so it's taught us especially to also have that kind of gratitude thinking in the day mm-hmm. of like, even if it was something small of like how Jude gave me an extra squeeze of my hug, mm. you know, before he left for school or um, it's the fact that like, I really enjoyed my morning cup of tea or, you know, the sun was shining yeah. or whatever it would be like, it could be the smallest thing, but it's showing them again that even those small things are, you know, throughout the day as well, even if it's been not the best of days. Um, I think that's been encouraging to, yeah, help them see that as well. Exactly. You're right. Exactly. So Super encouraging for them. So that's just a thing that we do at our dinner table. Some things we have found super helpful about having some kind, doesn't have to be dinner, but some kind of time where you are intentional with that time with your kids. It doesn't mean you have to have an hour. That's pretty unrealistic, yeah, actually. Definitely. Um, oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be that. Whatever it is, breakfast, and it, and like I said, snack, cup of tea, thing, dinner, yeah. just doing some kind of check-in of them um, with that that gets them a chance to have had that debriefing time of what, however long it's been from their day. Um, but then for you to share a little bit of your life, too, I think mm-hmm. it's huge for them to understand, like, mommy and daddy a little bit better and... Um, yeah, it's just been a real joy to have that be mm-hmm. part of our family. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to do all that stuff. But it just, we'd love to hear you give it a try if you've never tried it before. Or some of you do different things at your dinner table, too. Yeah. Would love we to hear from know you that. on those. Yeah, we want to hear from some of those because we've sat at some other dinner tables and they do it a bit differently and mm-hmm. stuff of, how, of the questions they ask each other um, and that we've taken from that, too. So we'd love to hear from you guys of what you do. Um at your dinner and you can do this too if you don't have kids by the way yeah like, i was just gonna say that yeah. if you are a couple if you live with housemates um like any of those things to build on those relationships doesn't have to mean you have children do that the high low high thing we've done it with adults when oh, they've yeah. been at our table and it's really cool to see like what things come out and what it makes you get to know people in a different way in that way too so i'd encourage that as well it doesn't just have to be with children exactly well yeah let us know any ideas you have of questions and stuff um, and give it a try. And we'd love to hear how this maybe high, low, high concept idea Works thing out. is going for you and send us a DM on Instagram is the best place to reach us at Lorraine collective and let us know about it. Um, and we'd love to hear your stories. Yeah. We will talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Thanks for listening guys. 
Thanks for joining us on today's episode of the Laurent Collective Podcast. If you enjoyed today's podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave a review, which helps others find our podcast. Continue the conversation with us over on Instagram at Laurent Collective. We look forward to going deeper than just surface talk with you again next week.